and that was a the mosaic project was a tax credit deal right so when we talk about education and understanding how you structure financing at different levels of investment right so we can talk about single family investing <laughs> on a very smaller scale but when we're talking about larger multi-million dollar projects it's important to understand that there's a learning curve that one has to go through to understand how you structure that capital stack, which in, which could include. Wait a minute, you're, you're using big words. Now. Sorry. What's a capital stack? Tell people what the capital a capital stack is. All right, everybody, welcome to the Finance Rebel Show. I am Kamari Ellis. I have my wonderful guest here today, Ms. Kim Avant Babb. Ms. Kim Avant Babb is a real estate investor, a designer of many disciplines and many things, and an entrepreneur. Um, I wanted to talk to her today because not only is she a real estate investor, she also works for the New Jersey Redevelopment Authority. Correct. So tell everybody what exactly a Redevelopment Authority is. Thank you. Because there's a lot of them there are. around, and people don't, I don't think people realize what they are. There are. There are. Thank you, Kamari, for inviting me and having me. And yes, Kamari and I go back uh, a couple decades. I keep reminding him of couple. that. It's a couple decades. Uh, but anyway, yes. Maybe a decade and a half. I don't want to be that old. Seasoned. Seasoned. We are seasoned. Okay. Right. I am the chief strategy officer at the New Jersey Redevelopment Authority, mm. and I have been there for two decades. Interestingly enough, wow. yes, uh, the New Jersey Redevelopment Authority is an independent state finance authority. And what that means is we, we really act like a bank, uh, although we report up into the Department of Community Affairs. We have a president and CEO, Leslie Anderson. We also have a board of directors. Uh, and in like a bank, we were given two major allocations of funding to create revolving loan pools to do redevelopment, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But we survive off of the return on those investments that we loan out. Like so, a bank. Like, just like a bank. Right. So we, we are not a part of the state's annual budget. Mm. We survive off of the return on the investment of those initial two allocations and the loans that we make and the return that we get on those loans. But what exactly do you do? Like, yes. what's your day in and day yes. out? Yes. So our, our legislation uh, was designed to do two things. Number one, we are a financial lender to assist with the redevelopment of real estate projects in urban in urban cities across the state. So there are about 70 classified as urban cities across the state of New Jersey, like Camden, like Willingboro, like Lawnside, Jersey City, Newark, Elizabeth. Um, so we can finance redevelopment projects in those cities only. The other side of our legislation is offering technical assistance. And 14 years ago, I led the team to create the vision of our president and CEO because we're, we're not a large group of folks. We're a mean, lean team is what I call us. <laughs> and so rather than dispatching us across the state, her vision was to create a hub of training. So we created the New Jersey Redevelopment Authority's Redevelopment Training Institute, which is a regionally recognized training institute where we offer uh, a couple things. Number one, we offer half-day, full-day, multi-day classes on understanding the rudiments around redevelopment. For example, understanding what is a pilot, what is a tax abatement, uh, what are tax credits, um, what is the redevelopment law in New Jersey. Uh, we've done classes interestingly designed on gentrification. <clears throat> Right, and I'll just put a pin in that for a second. Um, my team and I came up with a creative approach to it in that we brought in an economist to talk about why cities are built around workforce housing, and then we brought in a psychologist to really talk about and address when we talk about how communities are built and historically um, the urban cores and for example the white flight of the 70s into the suburbs the populations that were left behind they went through 
you know, psychological um, challenges because of the disinvestment in the infrastructure, the disinvestment in the housing. So that's an example of gentrification and how we kind of peel that onion back in a classroom setting. Uh, but we, we offer all sorts of classes specifically okay. around redevelopment. We it, are. It's funny you bring up gentrification and white flight. Yes. Because I just read a book uh, called The Color of Law. Got it. Great read. Um, talk about white flight. It's it's crazy, but just how redlining basically shaped neighborhoods yes. and cities yes. across this country. Yes. Uh, very much adversely to the effect of the black community. Correct. So that's that's very interesting. Yes. Very interesting. And so in the Training Institute, we have uh, explored and peeled back the onion on a number of different topics. We also use case study real estate development projects as case studies over a two-day classroom period. I was speaking with you earlier about Mosaic Development Group here in Philadelphia. Shout out to Mosaic. Shout out to Mosaic. Love you guys. And how a couple years ago, we brought the Training Institute into Philadelphia, used their project in Strawberry Mansion as as it, as the case study beautiful space beautiful space if you haven't been there um and really delved brought their entire development team in so we brought in the architects the designers the financial folks um and you know they were really fair and honest and opened their books to us to help educate that population of attendees on how that project happened right right and and that project for everybody that knows was multi-millions i forget how many millions it was mm -hmm. but multi-millions it wasn't just something that you kind of wake up one day and say oh i'm going to build this i think they've got 30 30 to 50 units in Correct. there yes. somewhere around there uh it's a huge space um it was an old old uh factory or warehouse it was an old um uh old, trying, railroad beer. it was a railroad, yeah, railroad. Okay. house yeah right mm -hmm. and so they redeveloped that and so a lot of times you'll see in cities these governmental authorities that will help and set up people to do different developments and I think that's something we rarely talk about um, we were talking about tax credits as well correct that's something we rarely talk about and that was a the mosaic project was a tax credit deal right so when we talk about education and understanding how you structure financing at different levels of investment right so we can talk about single family investing mm -hmm. on a very smaller scale but when we're talking about larger multi-million dollar projects it's important to understand that there's a learning curve that one has to go through to understand how you structure that capital stack, which in, which could include. Wait a minute, you're, you're using big words. Now. Sorry. What's a capital stack? Tell people what the capital a capital stack is. A capital stack is like a stack of pancakes, and 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 every layer represents. Um, Financing that you're going to use to get to the overall cost to develop that project. So it's like the mix. So you might have some cash. Correct. You might have some equity. Correct. You might have some debt. Yes. And that's the stack. Correct. Right? Okay. Yes. And that has to be thought out way ahead of time. Okay. Uh, so that you can build the project. Can you tell everybody exactly what a tax credit is? I know they're not all the same, but can you give like an overview? Or what a tax credit is. Sure, and and at the Redevelopment Training Institute, we we hold a two day class, which is one of our um, you know most highly attended classes. Is understanding tax credits. So you have new market tax credits. You have low income housing tax credits that are used to build like affordable housing. You have historic tax tax credits. So here in Philadelphia, uh, what comes to mind is the Divine Lorraine Hotel that's been redeveloped on Broad Street. The uh, Met. Right, they both use historic tax credits. Uh, you have uh, energy tax credits. There's like a, a, a short list of maybe about a half a dozen or a dozen tax credits, and basically, it's a, they're federal programs. Okay. That if you're building a his, a historic building, they will allow you. And I'm not an expert in tax credits, so don't quote me on every detail. But um, basically, it's 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 money that goes into your project as equity for a period of time. You have to have an exit strategy uh, over a period of time that you use those tax credits to actually fund your project. Right. But, if, but if you come to our classes, I mean, because there's, there's all kind of acronyms right. uh, that are used and they're very complicated. Right. Uh, and, and when we talk about tax credits, like a project has to be at a certain 
um, level of cost to even justify doing tax credits because right. of the legal um, uh, negotiating and, and all the documents involved. There has to be, uh, it, it, the, the, the project has to be a certain size in order right. to justify us using tax credits. Well, for everybody watching, just to kind of put it in a, a simplified type way, right? The in tax credits is like money. It's mm -hmm. money to help your project. I have a client that's doing some tax credit work out in the Midwest right now. So I've had the opportunity to kind of see it. Again, I'm not an expert at it, but he's got several parcels of land mm -hmm. um, and he's looking to develop it. And the development has to just has to be justified to the folks that are in power, the political people that are in power, because they want to see how is this development going to have a positive impact in the area that it's located in. Yes. And so they'll they're getting funding um, to help build from the government. I mean, yes. So you have a lot of wealthy people, a lot of rich people in real estate using tax credits yes. to help finance their deals. Yes. So I would suggest everybody start to do their research in the tax credits um, because it might not work for you right now, yes. but it could be something you have and you know, your, your quiver or in, you know, in the holster to pull out when the time is ready and then you'll at least know that, hey, there's this you know two block radius that's, got, that's abandoned and mm -hmm. you say, this would be great for maybe low to mixed income housing mm -hmm. and we can build it affordably, especially with tax credits. So check it out. Hey. So you've been doing, you've been working with the redevelopment authority for how long? 22 years. So you've been in and out of real estate, just about every facet of real estate throughout your career. Correct. From owning it at the personal level yes. to working at it at a governmental agency Correct. and working through large scale development projects. Correct. And, and, and so just to kind of, you know, amplify that, that journey, specifically at the Redevelopment Authority, I didn't have a finance background back in the 90s when I came in, uh, and they were managing a community-driven redevelopment visioning program called the Urban Coordinating Council. And so I got involved in it at that level, where I was working with the community and the stakeholders around what their vision was to redevelop their commercial quarter, right? Oh. And then I transitioned into an underwriter on the finance side. So I boned up, got educated on finance, and was out there looking for the deals for us to finance. So tell them what an underwriter does. Uh, under <laughs> so a underwriter, in the sense of the redevelopment authority, because we're like a bank, we only make money if we lend money. So I went out into these municipalities looking for developers or municipalities who wanted to do projects that fit our appetite for lending. <sighs> I would bring that project in, scrutinize it, um, look at all the financials, the timeline, to make sure that it was bankable. And bankable means? <laughs> bankable means that the project can be built within a time frame at a certain cost. We lend our money. We get a return on that investment based on Basically, the Basically, you make money off the project. Yeah, we want to make money off the project. <laughs> and so I, I did the underwriting on projects, and then I moved into and became a uh, instructional designer by leading the team uh, to build the vision of our president and CEO and creating the Redevelopment Training Institute. So we're actually in our 14th year of the Training Institute. We are a regionally recognized Training Institute. We've had people attend from 10 states around the country. If you are an attorney in New Jersey specifically, but a planner anywhere in the country, uh, if you are a tax assessor uh, and various other disciplines, you can come and get continued education credits by coming to our classes. So we've grown a pretty solid and respectable, incredible training institute where you can come and learn how to do real estate. And so all this, all this experience from owning your own personal real estate portfolio yes. to working at the New Jersey Redevelopment Authority, I'm sure you're pouring that in to landlord docs. Yes, I am. Um, every day yes. um, with the document, the, the bundle pack that you're offering, as long as the coaching pack that Correct. you're offering as well. And and I'm glad you said that because at every level of real estate, if if you're holding it, mm -hmm. right, from a single family uh, portfolio, which which my partner and I, Bad Properties LLC, has primarily single family 
properties um, to large scale um, office buildings. There are proper, there's a property manager or management company in place that has to maintain, scrutinize, screen those tenants right. on the commercial side and the residential side. So the property management piece is critical to the performance of your asset. Absolutely. And so that's why we created the Landlord Docs 30 bundle of documents to help you have the systems in place to screen and manage your tenants. So www.lldocs30.com is our website. There you go. There you go. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, you understand tax credits a little bit. Hopefully, you understand that real estate is very vast, and there are a multitude of opportunities out there. So all you got to do now is go out there and find them. So thank you for watching the Finance Rebel Show. We'll be back with your next episode at another time. Later.